Well, friends, once again, we want to welcome you to the broadcast today. I'm Dr. Randy Lane Bunch, pastor of Connecting Point Church and founder of Connecting Point Communications. We're so delighted that you've tuned in for what I believe is going to be maybe one of the most important lessons we've taught yet in our healing school. Before we get to that, we want to remind you, as always, of our website, randylanebunch.org. This is a ministry website, and on here, we have so many resources available to you free of charge. If you go to our media link on that website, you'll find that underneath that are our podcasts, our magazine, Connecting Point Magazine, a quarterly publication that you can view, read, or download for yourself in PDF format. We also have the previous editions to this broadcast, and I particularly want to encourage you to go to our YouTube channel. If you'll go to that direct link on our YouTube channel and subscribe to our YouTube channel, that'll help us greatly. We also have Connecting Point TV, a page that's directly on our site where you can view these broadcasts as well. And we just think it'd be very important for you to go back and review all these truths because, again, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And, of course, as always, we would love to hear from you. Please send us your testimonies at info at connectingpc.org. Tell us if you've gotten saved. Tell us if you've experienced the power of God uh, in a touch with your body. If you've been healed, we would love to hear your testimonies. And also, we'd like to stand with you in faith. If you have a need in your life for which you just need someone to stand in faith with you, we would love to do that. So please email us at info at connectingpc.org. As I said, I believe that today is perhaps the most important lesson, really, uh, that we've taught yet in our healing school. We've been going for a number of weeks now, laying a foundation of faith for you to receive, and already testimonies have been pouring in from what we understand of people being healed and touched by the power of God, and we delight in every one of those testimonies. But of course, important uh, beyond even the healing of our bodies is the salvation of our souls, that we give our hearts and lives to Christ, recognizing that He died to pay the penalty for our sins. But healing points to this beautiful redemptive reality of salvation across the board, touching every aspect and area of our lives. But today we're going to get into the gospel of healing itself. What is the true gospel of healing that provides a foundation of faith for us indeed to receive from God? Because as we've said, we can only receive from God what we know it's His will to give us. As F. F. Bosworth said, faith begins where the will of God is known. Or as Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We don't have a right to believe God for anything that we don't know. He's made a provision for us and provided for us in his wonderful plan of redemption. So we began with this verse in Romans 1.16 where Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God's salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. And we said there are three primary important things to recognize from this. Number one, the gospel is the power of God. That word power is dunamis. It's oftentimes used in relation to the power of God upon Jesus to minister healing. Acts 10.38 says how God and anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. When the woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus, the Bible said that power went out of him. That's the Greek word dunamis. And again, oftentimes this word power is used in relation to healing. So the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And we said that word soteria includes the idea. It's not only a forgiveness of sin and the new birth, but healing as well. And then of course, it's the power of God into salvation to everyone who believes. We must believe and act on what we hear for the gospel-saving power to be released on our behalf. Last week, we saw the gospel of healing in motion, in action, in the life of a man who was a cripple that the Apostle Paul ministered to. But he didn't minister to him through the laying on of hands. He didn't minister to him through some special healing anointing. Rather, he ministered to him by preaching the gospel of healing. And I want to read that passage of uh, Scripture again as we segue into what is the gospel of healing itself. It's in Acts chapter 14, verses 5 through 10. And there we read, And when a violent attempt was made by both the Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to abuse and stone them, they became aware of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lycaonia and to the surrounding region. And they were preaching the gospel there. Remember, the gospel is the power of God to salvation. And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul, observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped and walked. 
Now, without going through this whole passage of Scripture again like we did last week, I'd encourage you to go back and watch that whole broadcast because we go into this passage of Scripture uh, very carefully, step by step, to show what both Paul and the man did to contribute to this tremendous healing miracle. But remember, the Bible said that Paul saw the man had faith to be healed after preaching the gospel. And we said what's important about that is for the man to have faith to be healed, Paul had to be preaching a gospel that included healing because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As we said, you don't get faith for healing by listening to messages about the Antichrist and the mark of the beast. You get faith to be healed by hearing someone preach on the redemptive provision God made for our physical bodies for healing. And so Paul obviously was preaching a healing gospel for this man to have faith to be healed. And we rejoice about that because even though Paul is gone, there's no apostles of the Lamb or first century apostles to minister to us. Healing has not gone away. Not only has God given us his healing ministries to the church, but the gospel of healing is still with us today. And we're going to go into detail about what that healing gospel is. So if you'll go with me to Isaiah 53, we're going to look at verses 1 through 5. And we're going to take a good look at the gospel of healing. This is a passage where Isaiah is talking about Jesus dying for the sins of the world 700 years before it even took place. It's a, a messianic prophecy about the redemption Jesus would provide for us. So we're going to look at verses 1 through 5. Isaiah 53 verses 1 through 5. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Again, how powerful a prophetic depiction of Jesus dying for the sins of humanity 700 years before it actually even occurred. Now, typically when we want to talk about healing in the atonement, we'll go right to verse 5 because the word healing is mentioned there. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And certainly, healing is in the atonement revealed by this verse alone. If we had no other verse to go on, this verse would be sufficient. In fact, the word healed here is the Hebrew word Rapha. And if you've been with us over the last several weeks, you know that one of God's redemptive names is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. And as we said, these Jehovah titles, these Jehovah names, reveal different aspects of God's redemptive disposition toward us that find their actual fulfillment in the redemption of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Uh, but there's more to this than just this word here. But I do think it's worth taking a moment just to consider the fact that even Peter, in his writings, refers back uh, to this verse. In 1 Peter 2.24, it says, Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Now, it's interesting that Isaiah says, by his stripes we are healed. Peter, looking back at the cross, says, by whose stripes ye were healed, meaning that it's an accomplished reality now that Jesus has died for our sins. But remember, in the Old Covenant, the people enjoyed the redemptive benefits of God on the basis of a promissory note of what Christ would one day provide. So even in Isaiah's day, healing was a provision the children of Israel enjoyed because of their covenant with God and because of the fact that Jesus would one day provide atonement for them. So they received these blessings early, if you will, on a promissory note of what Christ would ultimately provide for us. The word healed, translated healed in 1 Peter 2.24 is a word that in the Greek is spelled I-A-O-M-A-I. And it's one of the most common words used of physical healing. Now, a lot of theologians want to try to dismiss the idea of healing in the redemption. They want to just make it spiritual salvation or spiritual restoration. But if that were the case, if that was God's intent, why would he use one of the words that's most commonly used to refer to physical healing to refer to spiritual restoration? He could have just simply said, by his stripes you were saved, or by his stripes you were forgiven, by his stripes you were born again. There's a number of ways God could have communicated that if that was his intent. But he uses a Greek word in 1 Peter 2.24 that's most commonly associated with 
with physical healing. So again, while certainly Jesus died to provide spiritual salvation, the Bible is clear also that he died to provide healing for our bodies as well. But friend, the real gem of Isaiah 53 in regard to healing is in verse 4. Notice what the scriptures here says. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. Now this is a perfect case of the old phrase we used to say, something gets lost in the translation, because the real meaning of this verse is really foggy here in the light of the English translation. The Hebrew words translated griefs and sorrows are the Hebrew words koli and makab, respectively, and they should have been translated sicknesses and pains. In fact, some modern translations of this will even mention this in the marginal rendering. Uh, but the Holman Christian Standard Version boldly and faithfully translates these words as they should be translated. And this is what the Holman Christian Standard Version says. It says, Yet he himself bore our sicknesses and carried our pains, but we in turn regarded him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. In fact, let me read you what some famous Hebrew scholars have translated this verse to mean on the basis of these two Hebrew words, koli and makab. The Young's literal translation translates Isaiah 53, 4 like this. Surely our sicknesses he has borne, and our pains he hath carried them. And we, we have esteemed him plagued, smitten by God, and afflicted. Isaac Lesser, a tremendous Hebrew scholar, translated this verse like this. But only our disease did he himself bear, and our pains he carried them. Rotherham's emphasized translation says, surely our sicknesses he carried, and as for our pains, he bear the burden of them. So all these translations are very helpful in helping us see that these words koli and makab in the Hebrew should have faithfully been translated as sicknesses and pains. But friend, we have an even a better testimony to the fact that this verse is referring to physical healing and Jesus boring our sicknesses and pains than all of this wonderful scholarship through these various faithful full Hebrew translations of this text. In Matthew chapter 8, verses 16 and 18, Jesus quotes Isaiah 53, 4 in relation to the healing ministry of Jesus. And this is what we read. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Now, I don't care what Bible you have. If you look in your marginal rendering or if you look for the reference that Peter's quoting here, I'm sorry, that Matthew's quoting here, you'll see that it points back to Isaiah 53, 4. All Bible scholars agree that Matthew is quoting Isaiah 53, 4, which in the English Bible says, he himself bore our uh, griefs and carried our sorrows. But Matthew faithfully translates the Hebrew words as they should have been translated. He took our infirmities and he bore our our sicknesses. There's not a Bible scholar on the planet who would disagree that Matthew here is quoting from Isaiah 53, 4, and Matthew makes it clear that this is referring to a benefit of healing that we have through Jesus Christ because he bore our sicknesses and he carried our pains. Now, some people might be confused and say, well, if Jesus was healing on the basis of Calvary, how come he was healing people before he actually died on the cross? But as we said, Jesus Jesus was as a lamb slain from before the foundations of the world. And all the people in the Old Testament received the benefit of healing on the basis of a promissory note of what God would one day provide in the atonement. This verse is simply saying that Jesus healed the people because he was going to be the one who would provide that healing through dying for our sins and thereby bearing our sicknesses and carrying our pain. So they too were receiving this benefit in the ministry of Jesus on the basis of a promissory note of what he would ultimately ultimately provide on Calvary's cross. Friend, every benefit we have from heaven comes through the cross. That's the only way we receive the benevolence of God because apart from the cross, all we deserve is judgment. So whether we're healed before the cross or whether we're healed after the cross, it all came through redemption. As Romans 8.32 says, He who did not spare his own son but del delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So again, this verse is simply showing us that the healing ministry of Jesus was made possible because of Calvary where he would have 
eventually pay the penalty for our sins, relieving us from the judgment of sin, both spiritually and physically, both temporally and eternally. So those people who received healing on the basis of a promissory note received it because Jesus would ultimately pay the penalty for our sins on the cross. There's one last internal proof here in Isaiah 53, 4 also, which is very important and worth noting. Not only did he bear our sicknesses and pains, but there's another clue here in the verse itself that I think is very important. Notice the verse again. Surely he hath borne our griefs or sicknesses and carried our sorrows or our pains. But now notice this part. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Now, when we read this verse, um, as we said, the people in that day thought that he was being afflicted because he had missed God, because he had called himself the Messiah. They thought God was punishing him. But what's very important in this passage of Scripture are the two verbs translated born and carried. He bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows. These words are the verbs nasa and sabal in the Hebrew. Nasa means to lift up or carry something. Sabal means to bear or carry a burden. And both of them imply the idea of bearing something as a punishment or a chastisement. Not for himself, but for others. In other words, it carries the idea of bearing something on behalf of another. It carries this idea of doing it in a vicarious nature. I'm bearing this, I'm carrying this away as your substitute. In fact, what's very powerful, later in the same chapter in Isaiah 53, these same two verbs, nasa and sabal, are used to refer to Jesus bearing our sins and our iniquities. Notice Isaiah 53, 11. It says, we see the labor of his soul. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear, that's the Hebrew word sabal, their iniquities. Isaiah 53, 12 says, therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death. He was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore, nasa, the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Now, if you talk to any Bible scholar on the planet and you ask them, how did Jesus bear our sins and our iniquities? They would say, well, he bore them in our place on our behalf. He bore them vicariously. That's the big fancy word for it. He bore them as our substitute. He bore them so that we would not have to. And the same words that are used to describe Jesus bearing our sins and our iniquities are the very same words that are used when Jesus bore our sins sicknesses and carried our pains. Friend, he bore our sins and our iniquities as our substitute so that we wouldn't have to because we couldn't. We couldn't pay the penalty for our sins, but he did. He bore them on our behalf. And likewise, when he paid the penalty for our sins, he released us from the power of sin judicially, both physically as well as spiritually, both naturally as well as eternally or temporally as well as eternally. So this is a complete redemption that we have in the light of Jesus Christ. And so friend, again, we come to this point of asking you, what do you believe? What are you going to exercise faith in? Are you going to put your trust in the master who died to pay the penalty for your sins? He is our Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord, our healer. And if you believe that he was your Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord, your righteousness, if you believe that he's your Jehovah Shalom, uh, the Lord, your peace, if you believe that he's the Jehovah Shama, the, the Lord is present with you always. If you believe all of those things, you have no choice from the scriptures, but to believe that he's also your Jehovah Rapha. None of those names have gone away. None of God's character has changed. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so the healing that was provided for the children of Israel, the healing that was ministered in the ministry of Jesus through the Apostle Paul and the disciples in the days of Christ, that same healing is available to us today through the gospel of healing. He bore our sicknesses. He carried our pains. And by his stripes, we are healed. And now one of the foundational things we've said again and again in this teaching is that healing is not an end in itself. It would be no good to get healed in body and then die and spend an eternity separated from God in a place of torment. The most important thing about healing is that it points to a greater reality, that our sins have been canceled. Because the same death of Christ that caused our sicknesses to be carried away and removed from us is the same death that caused our sins and iniquities also to be carried away from us. So the real important question for you today is not just, am I healed? Am I whole physically? 
Really, the question is, are you whole spiritually? Because, friend, the most important miracle that ever takes place in the life of anybody is when their heart is transformed, when the life of God comes into that dead spirit, barren of the life of God, and regenerates it and makes you brand new. The Bible said, if, there's any, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Maybe your past has been filled and riddled with mistakes and sins and faults and failures, and you think God would never accept me. But friend, the Bible said that Christ died for the ungodly. He didn't die for perfect people. He didn't die for righteous people. They wouldn't have needed it. But Jesus died for all of us because all of us were flawed, sinful. We needed help from heaven. And Jesus came uh, to us, God in the flesh, Emmanuel, to pay the penalty for our sins and die in our stead that we might have newness of life in him. And friend, that life not only extends into your spirit, but it can also be made manifest in your physical body. The Bible said, if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, that he that, that he that raised Christ from the dead will likewise quicken or make alive your mortal body by his spirit who dwells within you. So friend, the good news is today that Jesus Christ will come in and he won't just come in to dwell there. He'll come in to save, to deliver, and to heal. There may be some of you who've even dabbled in witchcraft and, and uh, different uh, things that are uh, ungodly along those lines, and God will set you free from the power of the devil. You know, we've had the privilege of preaching this same message around the world, and we've heard of tremendous testimonies of deliverance, of people instantly being set free from the power of the devil. People that were in the grip of Satan that were instantly delivered from the power of the devil when they put their faith and trust in Christ, and suddenly that old demonic oppression was lifted off them. We've heard of so many tremendous testimonies of people that were dramatically healed of all kinds of conditions, even terminal conditions, when they put their faith and trust in the gospel of Jesus Christ which is simply this, Jesus died for you to release you from the power of darkness, to release you from the power of sin, to release you from the power of Satan, and to release you from the power of sickness. Friend, I'm going to pray for you today. And first and foremost, I want to ask you this. Are you ready to give your heart and life to Jesus? Are you ready to turn from your sins? Are you ready to put your faith and trust in Him to be the Savior of your life. If you are and you're willing to commit your heart and life to Him, I want you to pray a very simple prayer with me. And I want you to pray it out loud because I think there's something about just saying these words out loud that'll seal the deal in our heart. Besides all that, the Bible says we got to go public for Jesus, friend. Jesus said, if you're ashamed to confess me before men, I'll be ashamed to confess you before my Father and the angels of heaven. So we don't want to be ashamed of Jesus. We want to go public for Christ. We need to confess Him to everyone that we can. But I want you to pray this prayer with me. Just say this with me if you will. Dear Jesus, I believe you died for me. I believe you paid the penalty of my sins to release me from judgment. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to change my life. I ask you to make me brand new. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and I receive you as my Savior. Friend, if you pray that prayer, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus, and we want to hear about it. We want you to email us at info at connectingpc.org. We would love to pray for you. We'd love to stand with you. You know, sometimes we give our hearts to Christ. There may be those in our family circle, those around us, uh, who give us a little bit of resistance, a little bit of pushback, and you need someone to stand with you. And I want to encourage you, if you've given your heart to Christ, find a strong Bible-believing church in your area that you can go to and spend time worshiping God. It's so important that we hang around with the right people who will fuel the fire of our faith and help us to grow in Jesus Christ. We can't do that alone. The Bible calls us to live in community one with another. So I want to encourage encourage you to find a good Bible teaching church where you can be strengthened in the principles and the truths of God's Word that we've been teaching you in this broadcast. But friend, that's not all. We're going to also pray for a healing touch. If you have sickness or disease in your body and you need a touch from heaven, we're going to pray for you right now. And we're going to ask God to minister life to your physical body from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Just pray with me and agree with me as I pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my friends. And I pray that right now, Father God, whatever their condition might be, I pray you administer healing and life to their physical body. Father, you said that the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if we're Christians, dwells in our mortal body and that you will quicken or make alive our mortal body through that same spirit. So those who are believers, Father, I pray that you just quicken their body by your spirit who dwells within them. I know that there are some, Father, watching this broadcast that maybe are not saved. They don't know you. But Father God, you want to show yourself strong on their behalf. You said these signs will follow them to believe. And one of them, they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And Father, we pray for the sick right now so that 
that the healing of the sick might serve as a sign and give credibility to the power of this gospel message we're preaching. Father, I pray that you administer healing to bodies right now. I pray for eyes. I just see there's somebody here. You've got problems with your eyes. I don't know if it's a vision issue, glaucoma, cataracts. I have no idea. But I just pray right now for eyes that they would be healed, for ears that they would open both spiritually and naturally. But I pray for hearing that ears would open. I pray for those that are crippled, that cannot walk, that have no mobility. I thank you, Father, for releasing joints right now, upper body, lower body. I thank you for full range of motion to those that are watching the broadcast right now. Uh, Father God, we curse cancers and tumors. We command them to wither and dry in the bodies of those listening right now. Now, we pray, Father, you'd show yourself strong to those watching this broadcast today. Show them that you are our Jehovah Rapha. Show them that Jesus is alive. We thank you that you'll do that by ministering healing to the sick. And Lord, we thank you for ministering life and healing to them from the crown of their head to the very soles of their feet. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you for it and give you the glory for it all, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friend, I don't know if you realize this or not, but your testimony can be so powerful and crucial in helping others come to faith as well. We would love to be able to share with others through our magazine, through our online resources, uh, the healing that you have received. So if you've received a touch from God, let us know about it. Email us at info at connectingpc.org. Share with us how the Lord's touched your life. If you've gotten saved, if you've gotten healed, if some other miracle took place. We have all sorts of testimonies from bygone days uh, of being on television and hearing God doing all sorts of wonderful things in people's lives as they heard the gospel. If you've received deliverance, deliverance from the power of darkness, we want to share your testimony with others. So send us a testimony. Again, email us at info at connectingpc.org. And again, I can't emphasize enough how important it is that you continue to feed your faith along these lines. Faith comes by hearing, not having heard. Yesterday's steak doesn't feed anybody today. You need to continue to feed on these truths. Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds out of the mouth of God. So you need to continually feed yourself on the truths of faith and healing. So go to our website, randylanebunch.org. If you'll go to the media link, you'll find all sorts of resources. You can find our magazine, Connecting Point Magazine. Not only are there current edition there, but you can also find ways uh, down on the page to read uh, previous editions of the magazine. There are all, all sorts of wonderful articles in there that will inspire your faith and equip you to live a, a strong Christian life in our current cultural climate wherever you live in the world. In addition to that, we have an iTunes podcast that you can subscribe to, and every time we post a new podcast, it'll show up in your iPhone or on your computer or whatever device you use uh, to listen to podcasts. We also have past editions of this broadcast, and I can't emphasize enough how important it is for you to go back to lesson number one in the Healing School and listen to all these again, because again, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, and you need your faith continuously strengthened in the Word of God. So friend, please take advantage of these free resources. That's why they're there to minister life and healing and blessing to you. And again, we want to hear your testimony. Please communicate to us at info at connectingpc.org. We love you. We're standing in faith with you and believing God for his very best in your life. We're not only standing for you, but those of you that are getting saved, we're standing with you for family members, extended family, that they too would come to know the liberty and the life that's in Jesus Christ. We believe that God has such rich and wonderful things for you in the days to come. Stay tuned to Connecting Point. Uh, we're going to be having more broadcast, continuing to teach on the subject of healing and many other things as well. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you next time on Connecting Point.